Oh, sorry, no. Sorry. And that would be what, six? Seven? But we can't even vote for the agenda. Technically, six. It is six? Uh, six point? Four? Well, five? Five. Reed's about to hop on. Re if, yeah, Reed's just going to Don't, yeah, don't start. Are you recording, Kenny? Yeah. Okay. Well, since we're recording and we are live, why not? Um, welcome to the TSEC official meeting. Today is Friday, February 9th, 2024. Um, let's see. Let's do attendance. I'll start with Matt. Matthew Rathman here. Alejandro Casillas here. Danny Palacios here. Mike Warner here. Okay. Gabe is, has uh, said he's present in the chat. Would anybody like to read their mission statement? Alejandro. To support the to support the evolving needs of the MSU Denver students by advocating in their best interest to enhance the university experience and opportunities. Cool. Um, we do not meet quorum right now, even with. Wait, wait, oh my God, I am so sorry. I am so tired. Um, even with our modified quorum with inactive members, we still do not meet quorum right now. We need one more person. Um, so I say we're going to move into updates. I don't know. We're going to meet. Why? Okay, well then we'll go through updates and then we, we I guess we'll discuss business, but we are not going to vote on anything. Uh, Mike, Board of Trustees. Um, Board of Trustees, I don't, what is, what is new, what is new? Um, there, there's a few things they're kind of grappling with at the moment. Um, I think they're going to have, probably have an not emergency session, but it's like, Getting that way, um, I feel like I also, yeah. And then everyone, I believe, on the board of trustees received a Christmas letter from a uh, a uh, re uh, removed professor here. I received a very lovely letter. I, I gave it to Dr. Brown and sent it to legal, FYI. So, um, but um, there might be, I feel like there might be another meeting coming pretty quicker than the March one. So, I don't know. Keep you updated. Oh, there's Reed. What, what are you, like... You're just gonna drop that. You're not. Are you not allowed to talk about what the letter is about? Like, do we need to take any action as TSAC? Like, what is the? Um, no, the letter is from Thomas Locke. It was. It was. Um, it was addressed to me, and it was very interesting. But um, it's it's just not a problem. Though there is, I, I did hear that uh, there was an issue um, with that media that was fixed. Now they're allowing volunteers there. Okay. So well, unless you haven't. No, no, that's we're it. Just gonna... That's it. So. Okay, hey, Reed, do you just want to let us know you're present? Sorry, team, I'm here. I was working so hard at the Constitution and lost track of time. Thank you, Reed. Uh, John, do you want to say your name and that you're here? John Nelson is present. Okay, uh, since we meet quorum, let's, uh, we're actually going to vote to approve the agenda. Does anybody have any one or motion, any changes to the agenda? Do you do? Yeah, um, eventually we can get to this point, but at the end where all the counselors are listed, um, probably remove Thomas and Paul, but that's later, but that can okay. be done next week. You can so. talk to the accountability committee about this. Gord, Kenny, he amended the agendas. Okay. Okay, uh, I motion we approve this and we approve this agenda. Thank you. Uh, everybody who agrees, say aye. 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 Cool. Um, perfect. Okay, we're going to keep moving in with uh, updates. Next, the SACAB and Gabe has stepped, typed in the chat. Hey, for all SACAB, for SACAB updates, again, we invite you for next Friday at 10 a.m. to the Area Master Plan meeting. It will be in the Senate chambers. If anyone is available, please, please join us. Thank you. His Wi-Fi is not the best right now, which is why he cannot use his, his mic. 
microphone and he said I to approving the agenda. Yes, Michael. And this could be an email, Gabe, but like what what is the master planning like what are they doing? Do they want student feedback? Do they like because I've been to these meetings, I kinda know what they're doing, but I'm just curious. It could be an email though. So I believe he has sent email. Okay. okay, we will come back to you, Gabe. Thank you. What well, he describes what these meetings are for. Yeah, student feedback on the vision of the future campus. Lovely. Sweet. Okay. Um, accountability committee three. Aside from incorporating um, the information into our constitution, I um, am going to be meeting with Gabe this week on, uh, sorry, beginning of next week on a few issues that were brought to our attention, um, and then we'll report back to the larger council. Also, we'll um, approve our, our committee, which is just Gabe and me right now, um, approve the, the letter for members that we need to send. So. We'll have a lot more to report next week, but as for this week, just finalizing the Constitution and then know that we'll be meeting prior to the next meeting, or the next council meeting with more to report. Thank you, Ree. <clears throat> Budget go. Gabe is typing something about the accountability committee, so I'm going to give him a minute. On that. I'm just waiting on okay. game. Oh, it's not for accountability. OK, so we'll keep going. OK, um, budget. Alejandro, uh, no update except we're going to be meeting. The budget committee is going to be meeting next week on Friday, February 16th at 11 PM or sorry, 11 AM. <laughs> um, and yeah, that's about it for budget committee. Um, OK, um, I do have something coming out for the budget committee, so I'll put them in your agenda, but we'll talk about that. Uh, PR committee, Matt. Yeah, so PR committee has been looking at our next tabling event. Um, we did look into one for next week, but with everything going on, I uh, want to make sure we're all taking care of ourselves. Um, so Gabe threw out an event uh, for, I think, like a women's appreciation day early next month, like the first week of uh, March, and then thinking about maybe doing like a field day the week after uh, spring break. Okay. Instead of doing one with that quick a turnaround while everybody is as busy and dressed as they are. Um, how's spring fling going? Do we have, do we know what we're doing yet? How, do we need to meet about that? Like what? We will. Spring fling is usually in April, correct? Yeah. So it's on my radar. I'll, we'll continue to work towards that as well. OK, yeah, because that, that's coming. Yeah, I'm scared. We're not going to get fruit <laughs> out anymore. <laughs> I learned my lesson. It, it was very successful. I vote for something covered in chocolate like that's and right. it's already. No, we're not cutting anything. <laughs> Alejandro. <laughs> You're um, right, it will. It I just fun. wanted to ask Matt if he can post the flyer for the um, headshots on Tuesday so we can have approximately two weeks for students to sign up. Would you like me to try and do that later today? Um, or would you rather me wait? Monday, Tuesday, the latest for sure. All right, I'll try and get I, to it today. Um, I don't think today would be good. I okay. think Monday would be best and then Tuesday, the latest for sure. That'll work. Thank you. Um, sweet. And I have got the passwords from Matt, so I will be contacting other uh, social media platforms to get with the funder. I mean, the fair housing event. They call it something else, but um, okay. 
Sustainability Committee. John, do you have updates for us? Yes, the Sustainability Committee has made a plethora of progress. And I will be able to document that in a video that I'm creating next meeting. So just as an update, I've been out on the field, walking around, talking to the students, seeing what is not being sustained and composted. I've been in communication with the sustainable uh, department to understand the difference between composting fruits and vegetables and meat. I thought that meat we just throw away, but I found out that meat can be composted using an industrial process that this campus does have set in place. So I will have the details put in a video that will be ran next meeting, and you all can see some examples of what's going on. Uh, Gabe is asking, how's the Antflow project going? He sent you four emails regarding it, including next steps and connections to other departments. I did not understand what you said, so you got to speak it up. Gabe is asking, how is the Antflow project going? He has sent you four emails regarding it, including next steps and connections to other departments. So I probably got bombarded with a lot of emails with class and stuff, so I apologize for the oversight. I'll go back and look and could give some updates once I know what the questions are. It is also in the Constitution, and then it is like that is the very foundation of our job, that, that every committee should be having a meeting. So we need to start looking into when the Sustainability Committee is going to, like, it, it is your job to organize those meetings. I hear what you're saying, and I ask that you, because I process very fast. There's a lot of things that I've been doing and not being on the email. So I ask for your patience. And like I said, next week I'll have some updates. But now I'm just talking so I could be a part of the conversation. But I'll have other things done by next meeting. Okay. Got it? I mean, as in like, it is definitely necessary that we, that you have other members in your committee and that you meet. Like that is just like a basis of it. No, I understand that because I don't want this to be a remix. I get what you're saying completely, but what I will be, what I will supply to the council is the documentation and everything by next Friday. And let me tell you all something too. This is the month that my mother passed, and the next meeting will be the day that she died eight years ago. So I'm processing that as well and still staying on top of everything. So thank you. Okay. Alejandro. Um, Gabe just said, who's currently on the committee or asked? Who are the, the Antflow? The Sustainability Committee. What's, it's, what's just me for now? It's, oh, it's just me for now, nobody else. Okay, so this can't all fall on John. So we need volunteers to be part of the Sustainability Committee. Like he doesn't have to appoint people. Like someone needs to go help them as well yes um I'd, I'd be happy to help you out with that i'll join the committee i would love to we work well together thank you okay thank you john you're welcome uh open floor announcements yes mike yes um i won't be here march 1st i'll be out of town okay oh yeah john so Okay, here we go. Y'all might not know this, but I'm a technological genius. And I've been in communication with Alejandro because the situation that's going on with the pronouns, where people are he, she, they, us, and the different things that they're choosing, because it's a binary thing and it shifts, my idea is to come up with a tag that is electronic. And that electronic tag will allow you to push what your pronouns are that day and it be configured and done by the students. I have the methodology and the ways to make it happen. It's just I'm using Alejandro and other technical people to manifest the idea. It's already written out. Alejandro and I have already started talking about ways and things to make stuff flow more automate. Aut I'm, my mind process is fascinating. Ways to automate processes within the student government that are old and antiquated. I won't throw them all at you because it's like a buffet, but the process of upgrade has started. So you will see me as an older black man who is known as Fresh Perspective. Thank you. 
Anything else on the open system? The open announcement floor. Okay. Um, I just wanted to say real quick. Uh, next Friday, the Minds of Auraria Scholarship closes. Um, that's being provided by New Alpha Kappa Fraternity Incorporated. Um, it's provided or it's available to students at CU Denver, MSU Denver, and CCD. Okay. And then, what was that? What is it that you have to close it? Uh, the scholarship closes next week. Oh, oh the Yeah. And then, yeah, just look around for flyers or reach out to a TSAC member to direct you towards me. Thank you, Alejandro. Um, I have one. If anybody else, are we all done? Sweet. Um, so with the fair housing event that we have coming up on Monday, there is a second part to it, and it is a conference. Last year, TSAC donated $4,000. Um, I will be, uh, that's what I will be bringing up to the budget committee to see if we can bring it up to the table for discussion. Um, what was the other thing? Oh, there is a survey that was oh, sort of a survey. It is, there are all of these components that Lead, senior leadership wants us to look at and pick three, um, as in what do we think, what values should we be prioritizing for student and faculty to rebuild trust with senior leadership and administration. I will be sending out a survey uh, next week, so please look, be in the lookout for that. Uh, yes, Michael. When you say rebuilding trust, I what did, like did, is that the the who sent it first of all? Ed Brown. And then rebuilding, like, do you mind forwarding it to me? Because yes, well, I'm gonna send a survey okay, with cool. everything else. So just please be be in the lookout for that because I have to come back to President's cabinet on the 29th with an answer from us. Okay. Um, I was oh no, that I have a I have an update for that. Anything else on open floor announcements? Okay, faculty and staff senate. Um, we did not get to talk about the mandatory as, uh, attendance and, uh, oh my gosh, an assignment thing that I brought up last week because the grad school representative, they're doing changes to the, the student handbook as well. So that is taking a while to figure out. So I, there were just a lot of a lot of ideas thrown out during our past meeting, um, but nothing concrete. So I'll come back whenever we have that. Oh, and then it's me again. We're the Council of Chairs and Directors. We met with the new provost, um, and there was a lot of questions about grievances, um, like grievances. What do we think like grievances are? So. If you guys have any grievances that you think I should bring to this council of chairs and directors, like to the provost, because it goes to the provost, please send me an email so I can just bring them forward. Yes, Michael. Um, I forgot to mention this, and I think you wanted to invite on this, so you're more welcome to come, Denny. I'm actually meeting oh, with the new yeah. provost next week. Um, Dr. Brown, how do you say new provost's name? The doctor. <laughs> Provost, yeah, but um, so yeah, but if anyone, anyone's welcome to join that, um, okay. but we're just gonna have a discussion, um, get to know each other, and then kind of just see where they can the students are. So um, I'll give you a date. Okay. Um. No oh, wait. I had another open announcement that I forgot about. Um, a student came to see me about flyers that are have a negative message against Israel. Um, and it seems like things are not good in the ground for our students, like our students are having a conflict in the classroom about this. And they are, you know, having like conflicting views in the classroom and there were some like threats in and outside of the classroom to each other. Um, and they they weren't they weren't threats. They were just like, I don't like you. I don't like you either. Uh, but it's not like pretty out there for our students with this situation. 
And I was very clear with the student that we tried having the university say something about the like war being bad and we have gotten no response. And it's just like, it's getting bad on the ground for students. Um, so I, I told them like, I didn't know what else to do other than I, I'm going to have the student write me a statement. And if he turns out to feel threatened about something, then we're going to have to do a report. Like if he feels unsafe, which he doesn't, but we're going to have to do an official report. Um, but I think like things are starting to hit the fan with the students and it is unacceptable that like the university refuses to say something about this. Not so, I don't know. And I, this is this I'm looking directly at you, Dr. Brown, because like I, you're the one that has more like contact with admin than any of, of us. But I like. I, I feel a little powerless here. Yeah, it's that's OK. Yes, John. Yeah. So let me make sure that I'm clear. There's starting to be problems in the classroom because students are talking to each other and that's causing some insecurity and because of statements. It's not insecurity. They just. They're just not agreeing with each other and it's getting heated. So I knew this was going to happen. So one of the things that's going on with the students collectively and a lot of people, there's this energy of getting offended and we're at an institution of higher learning. And everybody came here on this campus to upgrade their thinking. And there are still some people who operate in that nervous energy. And so we've got to have some type of brave space where people can start talking and allowed to be talked without being judged and reactionary. It's, an, it's a reactionary energy. And I've been able to quell it when I've been in the presence of that starting to happen because I had a black mama, I know how to quell the little issues, but collectively, there's too much tiptoeing around feelings. We have to start talking about Tivoli Room 651, where there's therapy that can be given for each student. I've used it. We get six sessions per semester. So we have to, so we have to promote people being comfortable enough to be authentic. If we don't start that here, when they leave the confines, I never say the real world because it's all real. When the students leave the confines of this campus, they will not be able to get along with other people in other careers. So this is coming up for an opportunity to heal. So that's where we got to start having more brave spaces. And and because people are going to get offended, not because the person is saying something nasty, it's because it's new data being given to that person based and that person may have had trauma or been disrespected at home because students are very intimate with me. I've had rapport with students long before I got on this council and I've heard the stories and I've been known that they, they call me now the fairy godmother in male form because the students are coming to me and talking because of my age. I've had experience and I don't minimize their experience as well because even though I'm older, there's things that you all have been through that I have not. So I'm able to have that loving, open ear. And one of the things that we made a mistake on on this campus is we spent too much time with protection, not affection. And protection just isolates us. And that's what causes these misunderstandings. We're not using the English correctly. We're spending too much time with acronyms. People are misunderstood. And students are just now used to communicating openly. You remember COVID kept us separated. We did all this virtual stuff. And this is a side effect for the constipative attitude of not having open dialogue. So that's what we got to start having happen. As much as I fundamentally agree with what you said in the sentiments, I need to see a plan and like, yeah, like you have all of these great ideas constantly, John, and I, I respect where they come from. And I know they come from a place of like genuine care. Mm -hmm. um, but I do need to see like, and you tell us a lot what we need to do, but like there is a lot lacking on the like how to do it, when to do it. That's so please, true. so please, I ask that like if you are going like that doesn't end at sentiment and intention. I, I need you 
personally, and I'm telling you what I need as the yes, chair, ma'am. for you to come up with an actual plan with steps that we can follow. Because I do like I do not have the energy for that. That's why I'm looking at Dr. Baron with like mm. desperation. So any like I I advise my my advice to you and what I need from yes. you as your fellow counselor is that you come up with a plan of what we need to do and then we vote on it and then we talk about it as a group. I can do that. And I heard you clearly. Yes, ma'am. I can do that. Give me between seven to 14 days to come up with something. Okay. I'll go as fast as spirit downloads something because you want methodology. I know you're very organized. You need. (laughs) And so that you need one. I get it. I don't have to say anymore. Like, like, uh, uh, we have three, we have three minutes until, um, and yeah, into public comment. You know, uh, C2 Hub has peer mentoring. If you like want to come up with something like that or a C2 Hub, how they do that, like it is what you're talking about, it's a whole ideology change, and that's going to require a lot of a work, of a lot of work. So start doing your research, and I'll check on you today in 14 days. Absolutely. Yes, ma'am. Okay, Ray, did you have something? I do. Um, I would like to suggest we cannot change ideologies. Um, lifetimes of yeah. disagreement and civil war and 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 I mean believe me we can't and if we try we are only going to meet disaster and I would suggest we put a very neutral but but um understanding statement at the front of our website about um the this conflict and how, and our understanding about how it affects our students and our community and then we offer reference um, these points of the care center and you know counseling oh, okay. and anything else like that. There, we're giving them the tools they need, but we're also acknowledging we are not experts in this, and we're not going to be able to solve anything. Okay, I I like that. I definitely like that. Um, I will. I don't. I don't know. Again, I need. I'm honestly, guys, I'm overwhelmed. So I need someone to come up with the like steps for this. I like this. This is a great idea, but like, yeah, I got a lot going on. I'll work on phrasing and um, I can talk to, you know, send it to you guys in the chat when I work on this and get feedback and everything. But I just feel that our trying to just even facilitate discussion on this, there is, there are generations, (laughs) you know, of, of, disagreement on this and we're not solving anything we are not this is i lived in cyprus this greek turkish thing that was going on there people were taken out of their homes this is something we can't even imagine so in i think it's just best for us to make a really understanding statement and i'm happy to work on that and then provide resources for people and i think we've done our job in doing that when we do this Okay, we'll look into it. I'm going to have Mike because he his hand was up first and then I'll go with you. And then public comment in a minute. <clears throat> Let me just wait. Public comment has just started. If yes. there is anyone that would like to say anything, just please make yourself known. Otherwise, we're going to keep going. Yes, Mike. <clears throat> Sorry, let me s- swing back around here to what the original kind of thing we wanted is the university to say something. I think administration to at least <clears throat> acknowledge that there may be a lot of things going on with students right now, whether the university has caused them harm or not. I'm not saying there's a, there's a lot of things. It's a broad it's a broad thing, Dr. Brown. I see, but like an acknowledgement. Hey, there's a lot of things going on right now, or something like that. I think it's would be the first step. Like, because right now, I mean, I, don't, I mean, I don't think like, I've heard from the university and like like say something about I mean, maybe they, global issues, local issues, things like that. I don't think I've, I've heard nothing from them. So I'm going to just answer that real quick. So I'm meeting with Dr. Benitez next week um, because as like the head of the diversity and inclusion division, like he should be given that the statement given our cabinet was related to diversity and inclu- like, diversity and inclusion and like on the student body. Um, so I'm meeting with him next week and I asked the student to have the statement written for me so I can bring it to him. Um, sure. Sure. I just because like the student was asking like so if if other students can say things so where does my right end and where do, like where does my right start where does my first amendment end and where does it start and he was asked 
he was like, I can make the most outrageous claims about a population and then it's going to be okay. So it's, it's getting hard. It's getting hard down here and I, I don't feel supported. Yeah. Yes, John. So I'm going to start off by saying there's a quote by Alan Cohen. It's better to be happy than to be right. So I'm going to piggyback off what Reeve was saying. I agree with her that we should have a statement. However, I would pose for the council to upgrade that a little bit. Look, I don't ever say I don't have the training, but I've been on this planet for 57 years. And experience is just as good of a teacher as any book is. And so we have to step a little bit further past the, the regular being nervous and saying I'm not qualified because I get I get guided within myself to say things and listen to students at the time and those rendezvous they listen and I listen and so we got to think we you know how people say think outside the box stop creating a box to think outside of we don't have to create that loop and I really want you all to be in the thought process with that and I will be able to assist because I could tell you stressed out. I could tell that the students are coming at you left and right. That's why I'm listening to you and I'm hearing. So thank you. Thank you. Any other comments on this? Dr. Brown has a comment. Sorry, Dr. Brown, I didn't see you. You're usually next to me and I get to see what you're doing. Um, I just want to say that I appreciate everyone's um, concern around this and raising this issue. I appreciate the comments that we made because I, I have to agree that I think that this is going to be a very, this has been and will continue to be a very challenging year politically for many, many reasons, not just the conflicts that are happening in the world, but I think that there's a lot happening in our country too. And there are a lot of pressures and I'm feeling them too. And I guess what I really appreciate about the suggestion, and I'm, I agree that you all need to ask really good questions um, around the why nothing um, or what, what is the plan, right? For the university in terms of acknowledgement of what is happening. I don't, I think that next week we have some visitors. Um, I think Kenny, did they, I think they're confirmed. I think we have um, Andrea Smith who will be coming from our communications um, and Will will be here. And I think maybe um, one of Janine, somebody from Dr. Davidson's office as well to talk to you all about, uh, about how those decisions are made around, you know, communications and making statements and those things. So you can at least get that perspective. But I, I also think that it's important for you all to recognize that because you are your, your own shared governance structure, you do have the ability to, um, to make a statement or put a message up on your, whatever it is, you know, your social medias, your website regardless of what the university does because that is your you have that opportunity to do that as your own body um i do think it's something that you all want to make sure that you're that you all take a good look at it and that you are collectively you know recognizing that by making that statement that you're all on board with it i think voting on it would be really important too and yeah. um being really thoughtful and I can help with like collecting of resources as well. Um, and I know Taylor and I are in many conversations about how are we going to navigate this next year, specifically not only what's happening in the world and those conflicts, but also the potential challenges of us being a very highly political campus. And this year we're going to be in person where in 2020 we weren't when a lot of the social movements and things were happening. We were just talking about it this morning. So please know that I am I am well aware and we are having conversations about it. It's just trying to align our efforts on what this is going to look like. And so I let me know how I can support you with that statement or whatever you all decide to do. I just wanna make sure that you're all supporting one another in it and that it feels like it's a 
unified voice, whatever that voice is. I think. I think that it like for me at least that I've been like at the forefront with this discussion with admin. It's not the like I'm throwing it at you. That's not it. Um, it's the fact that I I don't like you, to be touched. Have, yeah, I'm okay. good. Thank you. I'm sorry. Okay. I just I'm, I'm not sure. Yeah. Um, that I was at the chair meeting, at the like at the chair and directors meeting. I introduced myself and I was told that I was brave by because I was willing to talk to these people. And in my head, I'm like, I'm going in debt. Every single student or like most of these students in university are going in debt. You pay your sal well, the salaries of admin and leadership. And like they have the nerve to tell me that I'm brave. So like for me, that says a lot about like where admin thinks they are they're at with us and like the level of like what it what it means within like student relationship so i don't i don't know if like they knew like and i hate the bus like terms and i hate them. but like that was my profession and like it's like it sucks for me to think that that's what our students are also going through Um, so I don't know, we've discussed a lot and we have, Michael has like talked plenty about how we have not had enough support, but I, like that wasn't, that wasn't lack of support. That was, that was a slap. Go. Yeah, and I have talked extensively about how I think this formation of student governments in a sense handicapped us because like admin like i don't think admin takes us quite that seriously to be honest it, it's it's kind of rough like we're kind of used as student leaders but like can the president name everyone's council i don't think i don't think she can and we're probably being unfair at like throwing all of this no, yeah so yeah honestly, we're, we're, we're directing to you but like that's the like added on to the internal issues we have this year there's no stress on the stress like this university, I mean, there's there's someone who was on student government a long time ago, who and she works here in administration, says this university like puts a lot on their student leaders, a lot on their student leaders, a lot of stress, a lot of anxiety, a lot of motion. We'll say, yeah, it's a better it's a better term, and and, and I, it takes years to recover. She she didn't come back to this university for three years because she had to recover from it. So I don't think that's something like I think admin might need to take a look at how their like their relationship with student leaders on this campus. Like, what are they looking for? Because in the two years I've been here, you've been great, Dr. Brown. But like, I mean, the president hasn't come to see us once. She doesn't come to our inauguration. She probably, I mean, I'll send her the invite, but I don't know if she'd come to this inauguration, quite frankly. And it's kind of disappointing. So. I, I, and I, again, I don't know, like, I don't know how to tackle this. The, this specific issue, like, I, I don't know. I and I, I do feel a little powerless. Yes, John. So, to piggyback on what everybody's been saying, I've been experiencing some pushback too. When you all asked me about the on flow project, where we would so when it comes to the color students, if I walk up to a color woman and I ask her, is she using tampons, diva cup, or whatever, she will begin to explain to me the non color students. Not all of them, but the ones who are comfortable, they will answer my question and give me education because they know that this older man understands anatomy and is coming from a place of love. But yet some of the students and other people are like, we don't say this. We have to preface it. And so I've had a council of other black people that have talked to me and I have phrased it to be as soft as possible. But for in college, we should be able to ask questions. I can ask a woman or a man any kind of question about anything and still be mindful of trauma. But we've got to stop having the mentality of tiptoeing. Closed mouths don't get fed. And this chaos that everybody's experiencing is because we don't allow ourselves to operate at the higher level of communicating. Thank you. 
Hi. Good to see you. Good to see you not in camera. <laughs> <laughs> it's very nice to be here not on camera. I appreciate yeah. that. Hi, you again? What, what is your name? Um, I, I'm Sean Schaefer. I'm the Associate Vice President of Curriculum, Academic Effectiveness, and Policy Development here at MSU Denver. Would you slow down, please? Well, I can try. Okay. Thank you. Years in the classroom uh, and that need to uh, communicate as much material as quickly as possible. Yeah, I can get going a bit faster and I occasionally get it over. Oh, yeah. So I hear you. Yeah, it's a lovely theory. Well, today, what I have to say is all about 2,250 minutes. That is, I remember this one. <laughs> I remember this of uh, APC. Okay. Perfect. Uh, so today we have uh, Dr. Sean Schaefer with us. He's going to talk to us about core scheduling. The floor is yours. Yeah, well, actually, um, more than anything else, I'm going to talk to you about uh, an option for how we could schedule courses. And... I came here entirely today because I would really like to gauge your interest in this. Because if I leave here today and you have no interest in this, I will set this back aside on the shelf of good ideas and never come back to it until such time as someone else determines it matters. Um, but if it's something you're interested in, something you want to pursue, then that's what I'd like to do. So, Kenny, if you want to go ahead and, and hit the next slide. Um, so this is just to give you a little bit of background uh, on kind of why it's 2,250 minutes <laughs> is basically we have a federal minimum that we have to meet in instructional time uh, to arrive at the credit hour. And most, like I note on here, 90% of our MSU Denver courses are three credit courses. So they meet for at least 2,250 minutes a semester. All right, and the way we've broken it out is most of our three credit courses meet twice per week for 75 minute sessions. Um, our semester runs 15 weeks plus two hour blocks uh, at the end for finals, which gives us 2,370 minutes. Uh, and what that really does is it's, we're slightly above the federal minimum, um, which is really helpful for whenever we have to close campus for something. Um, it, it means, because basically our accreditation uh, does come under threat when you can't meet the federal minimums. And so we're, we're always slightly over, a little bit of a buffer, but not a ton. Kenny, if you go ahead. Okay, so we think um, that this is the best way to provide content. But if you look at our retention rates and our matriculation rates, um, there's some real question about if we're right. Um, one of the things that we would like to do is raise both of those. Um, we really, at this institution, pretty much talk about uh, matriculation, so your graduation rate is really in, in a six-year block. Uh, that's really what we're looking at here. Um, not the conventional four-year that many people talk about, which is why when we get paired to other institutions, we alter a little bit in that examination. Also, in terms of our retention rate, um, this is something we could always do better. And while we're seeing a slight rise uh, this spring from last fall, it's still below where we'd really like to to you know, have it. So one of the things that we've kind of been talking about is, would it benefit students if we looked at something other than the traditional course scheduling? Wow. So just kind of tinkering around with the numbers, if you use that 75 minutes twice a week and instead you start playing around with this basic 2250, what can it look like? You know, how many minutes could we meet per week and where would it go? Um, and this gives you an idea of how long your semesters would be. So if you just add five minutes to your class meeting periods, you cut a good week and a half off of the length of your semester. Yeah, so that, yeah. so I see that and I'm kind of excited. I'm like, okay, well, what the hell? Let's try 90 minutes uh, at a time and see what that looks like. Well, now you're down to 12 and a half weeks. And it's like, okay, there's some potential there. And then I'm like, well, you know, <laughs> what the heck? I'm gonna be crazy. I'm gonna say, what if we did 90 minutes three times a week? Now you're down to eight and a third weeks is a semester, which is kind of an amazing moment. And then this, what if we did 180 minutes twice a week? So, so think about that and you get down to six and a quarter weeks. So it, just to give you some ideas. And then, and I, I will add to this, um, it's not quite as ludicrous as it sounds. Uh, I have, ex one of my things I do is I teach at a university in Egypt. And their, their basic course model is a 90 minute session, but I have a lot of three hour sessions. And so I know it can be done, um, but I thought I would start there. So Kenny, if you go on to the next one. All right, so looking at a three hour block, 
uh, one of the things that I started really building out. So I was like, man, I'm down to six and a quarter weeks. That's pretty amazing. Um, we, we were able to do a lot. And so I started going, OK, well, what if we assume this as a seven weeks to allow for what if we have a holiday or a snow day that throws in there? Because um, if you've ever taken a summer class here, you may have noticed if you have a Monday summer class, we now have the interesting challenge of both Juneteenth and this past year, the Fourth of July holidays were both Mondays. Uh, the math teachers really didn't like that. Um, they did not like losing two Monday classes. No one else complained. So take that, you know, uh, where you want to take it. So one of the things I started looking at was trying to come up with what if we did some class blocks um, and knowing that there's been talk about the community hour. And I know that that's been something that's, that you all have, have looked at before. You know, what if we started thinking about this in three hour blocks? So Kenny, if you would go ahead. Um, it does lead this real question of, we could do some Friday only courses. We could do similar time blocks on Fridays. Uh, we could do all day nine to four uh, courses on Fridays only. Uh, we could do Friday as just if you're taking something that needs more than 2,250 minutes, like a four credit or a five credit course, that's that's where those blocks would always wind up. You'd always know you'd have a Friday class meeting. Or we can leave Friday as is, which is largely unused. Um, so just some possibilities. Yeah, go ahead. So my concern with John, can we do questions at the end? No, yeah. this, is a, this is a statement to piggyback <laughs> on what he's when, saying. Can, OK, I have to say it at this moment. My concern, sir, is that when you when you add more minutes to the class, the children are already assimilating data and not necessarily getting it. And I want to throw something in your repertoire. And I just found about it today. It's called photo reading. It's a way to read faster and retain the information. So that's something to think about. Thank you for allowing me to interrupt. Oh, not a problem. So one of the things we started tinkering around with is if you did start viewing the world in a three hour blocks of classes for seven weeks, what might a schedule look like? And so basically what I came up with is, is a way that you could break it into the spring semester now becomes two semesters in effect. Um, you have a summer. Uh, I threw out this idea of what if you had a university boot camp and then you had essentially two fall meeting uh, with a one week break in there. So it it kind of lessens some of the breaks. Um, this boot camp idea was really based off of some readings of what other universities have done to introduce first time students uh, or new transfers, get them kind of a break in period, probably an easy couple of credit period for them right there. Um, it, it might be very interesting to think about coming in and in January and February, if your course blocks worked out, you could sit there and go, OK, well, I could bang out 12 hours in two months if that's what my schedule, you know, and there's work and life and everything else uh, that may or may not make these things work. And I say all of this with an, a very deep seated recognition that the reason our classes are fullest between 930 and about 315, 330 every day is because that's where people's schedules allow them to be here. You know, when you look at if you've got children or siblings that you have to deal with and you've got to drop them off for school and you're in Jefferson County School District and they don't start till 855 in the morning and you can't drop them off more than 15 minutes before without having to pay for child care and you got a 28 minute commute to get downtown, all of a sudden it's really tough to make a nine o'clock class. Um, so, yeah, so 930 kind of makes sense. And then you get the, the flip side of the back. So this was kind of a, a possibility looking at one of those. Yeah, Kenny, if you want to go ahead on to the next one. Um, Kind of ways that schedules would change if we tried to do something like you know break it up into three-hour blocks over a seven-week period you pretty much would kill the winterum classes so if you've ever done those winterum classes that two-week period it would make it pretty difficult it would also make it pretty challenging to do may master uh, those may master classes have been uh, between the end of the spring semester and the start of the summer semester traditionally and you always have the memorial day holiday that falls in there so you essentially have nine days of instruction uh, that you can do this. I mean, uh, this I've taught many a May master. It's actually something I really enjoy, so I don't, you know, fall in love with my choices. Um, but this was one possibility. Uh, if you did the seven week, kind of the way I'm proposing it, you'd be looking at the first week in March would be your spring break, which may not be ideal. You'd have a one week break between sessions. So if you were doing spring one and spring two, there would be that break there. Fall break and Thanksgiving week would would also happen uh, still. And your winter break would be most of December under kind of what I'm looking at for this calendar. So some things that, you know, I came up with and uh, we're, we're getting toward the end, so we can pretty quickly turn it over to you. 
Um, consent sessions, uh, which for some people, uh, that's a better thing. Some people, it's a worse thing. Um, possibility really focus on fewer instructors at once, uh, because if you're thinking about it, you might wind up just, you know, I'm only going to take 12 credits anyway over the course of those two seven-week periods. I'm only really taking two courses at a time in each seven-week period. Um, possibility to finish more in a four-month period. Uh, that was one of the things that I really liked, because if I could do three of the course blocks in a day, okay, all of a sudden that's nine hours in each session, you know, with my Monday, Wednesday allowed for that. Or if I couldn't do that and I take 12 hours over a Monday through Thursday schedule and I double that, that's 24 hours all of a sudden. So, I mean, it's, it's a significant change. Um, it, it would, you know, would kind of make it easier on uh, what it would look like for uh, your kind of course scheduling. Uh, some of the drawbacks, is this is not going to work in all subjects well. Um, I, you know, I've taught ethical and legal issues in journalism for years, and I have taught it in a summer session once, and I will never do that again. Uh, it was terrible in an eight-week period because you want people to develop ethical reasoning, and it turns out that you can't cram enough legal information in and, and build the ethics at the same time. So that one was tough. Um, possibly a sense of being rushed. Um, we, we're kind of used to this. I mean, most people came out of a K-12 through system that was an 18-week semester. Uh, you got here, and it's only 16 weeks. You know, it, it, it feels very normal. Um, it would be some challenges in scheduling and in financial aid. Um, I've talked to Jennifer Helgerson in financial aid about this, and she was a little skittish, but um, I've seen other institutions do it, so I know it's possible. Um, the breaks that I'm kind of looking at, if we did it this way, don't really align with what the DPS calendar looks like. So for a number of people, that would be a problem uh, if they have kids in uh, Denver Public Schools or someone they have to be a caregiver for in there. And then I'm sure there are others. So those are kind of some benefits and drawbacks I see. Kenny, I think. So this is that moment where I get to ask what your thoughts are on this. Um, is this something worth pursuing? Why am I not? Um, would there be some way that we could go beyond this room to measure, you know, kind of how student desire might be for something like this? And are there other ways to meet this same goal? Because what I'm really thinking about is, you know, are there better ways of scheduling than just what we're doing? Knowing that the, really we have about a six hour period in the day that, that we're pretty much limited to, or at least that's what our traditional demographics have told us. So the floor is yours. I have Reed. Reed wanted to say something first and then I'll have you. And then Mike. Did Hello, you? sir. Um, oh, I'm oh. online, so I'm sorry I'm not in the room, but I. That's okay. I I'm happy to... I'm in the room. <laughs> I wanted to ask um, specifically about, is this for all students, including graduate students? Is this a concentration of undergrad or are you looking outside of the university to attract high schoolers or other college students or those who aren't even in college who might desire to just be accepted to be involved in these either shorter or Friday um, classes, things like that? Thank you for asking. I'm actually really looking mostly at the undergraduate student population. I kind of chatted with um, Inga Vafis, the AVP for graduate studies about this, and they weren't particularly interested in it. They, they feel like they have pretty good flexibility in how they want to do their scheduling. And for mm -hmm. instance, the Masters of Public Accountancy people were like, no, uh, we don't want to do that. So, you know, fair. Mm -hmm. um, and, and I think it does kind of draw in people who might otherwise not um, avail themselves of university opportunity if they knew that they could do in two months certain things. Um, sure. We also talked about, you know, what if we tried to schedule this as a pilot program and that's a disaster. We pretty much have to move the whole ship. Um, you either do it or you don't do it if you're going to take that big of a step. We talked about, uh, you know, how would this look for four and five credit hour courses? And that's where it really becomes, yeah, we almost have to have the Friday space available for them uh, if we're going to do this in, in that sort of format. Um, yeah, I mean, there's just a lot of possibilities. I think it was, a, it, it really came out of this whole idea of could we use a four month period better? Um, you know, and that that's kind of where we started. I know that um, if I can follow up, if y'all don't mind, yeah, yeah, yeah. I know that on um, my kids right now are in a class that start at one, started at one and they are, it finishes at 350. So this is an aerospace. Um, it's over in the cybersecurity building. But, you know, if I can say that Fridays um, as a professional 
even though I am a master's student, if I was an undergraduate student working at another job, I would say that Fridays are really a, a more flexible work day for people to be able to take on something else and possibly, you know, take a course, even if it's a little bit longer or try a boot camp or, you know, do something extended. I was su going to suggest that I know that uh, the campus has thought in different ways about minors for the major courses, and maybe there could be, even if it's just in one department, you know, floating a minor course to accompany a major degree on a Friday. Sorry that I'm stuck on Fridays. It's just that seems like something that would be easy when there are not so many students here anyway to bring on board and test. Yeah, I mean, uh, and I appreciate that. One of the things I stayed away from is we did talk about, too, um, what about doing weekend seminars? You know, what about doing courses in a Friday, Saturday, Sunday module approach? Um, you know, we've done a few of those and a couple of departments still do uh, a couple of them. They just have not not really generated much in terms of interest. And so, I mean, they they could. I, I love seminar courses. I think they're awesome. And, you know, when you teach them and it's a few weekends of that, it's like, oh, yeah, so we go long day Friday, long day Saturday, half day Sunday, do that for a couple of weeks and voila, I've finished my three credit course. You know, that's pretty satisfying. Um, but it, culturally on this campus, it doesn't seem to have worked very well. And so I held off on that, but that's why I throw it out. I mean, it's, it's another possibility. I have Mike and then I have you on the stack. Yes, Mike. Hello, Dr. Schaefer, good to see you again. Um, I like bits and pieces of this, I do. I think. So we'll start off with, um, I saw university boot camp on there. Um, love the idea. I think that just speaking from my personal experience, neither of my parents went to college. So when I got here, I didn't know what a festival was. And then I learned on campus what it was. Um, I think a lot for first gen students, I think this that would be great. Like you, because quite frankly, I don't think like high school would prepare you for college at all. Like I was it was a bit shocked when I got here. Uh, I think I like that idea. I don't think and I think if like something like this would be implemented, I do like this like site changes, like not like the beginning of that rather than the big drastic change, because um, I could see this definitely helping undergraduates, especially like if you don't know what your major is, um, like the first two years, if you're, doing, if you're just doing a bunch of like what's called classes. Yeah, general studies. Um, I see this kind of helping that experience along it gets a little more rougher once you get to upper division courses you're in for classes longer. I've taken a bunch of math classes that are like three hours that are kill like kind of kill, kind of kill me. Um, but that's just kind of my general thoughts of it. Um, I do like the university of Bootcamp idea. I think that would be a great addition to the school for sure. And also, oh no, my last thought. Um, did, the reason I say kind of slight change is because university culture here would change with it. Um, there's a lot of organizations, a lot of groups on campus who kind of depend on students to be there and, and events to be there, all that stuff. And if you change it's so drastically like today in the model where like a course is done in like six weeks, then students aren't campus no more. You know, you kind of, kind of is that kind of give what I say a little bit? You kind of am I? Giving uh, yeah, no, I totally understand what you're saying. I mean, yeah. that, it's 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 a it's one of those concerns we have, and and mm -hmm. one of the things you have to think about if you were going to do something like this is how do I sell you on the idea of what you do with the second seven weeks? Yeah, you absolutely. know, and and I think for a lot of people, scheduling wise, it would be tough to really maximize those blocks to the point of like, oh yeah, I am taking 24 credit hours in in essentially a 16 week period that I normally would have done 12 or 15. Because mm -hmm. I mean, it, it's not like the cost of those per credits will suddenly drop. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I, I, I definitely hear you there. Um, and, and that's why you, you you float something out like this and you try and see what yeah. people respond to. No, I think it's an interesting idea. Definitely worth uh, me taking a look at for sure. John. So I'm concerned about we're turning education into an energy drink. It's crash and burn. <laughs> we're sitting up here, uh, we're, we're, we're having students stay in longer, assimilating information like a buffet that's choking people out. And these ideas can be great, but we have to introduce a way to where we're not creating great test takers. A lot of times students will make A's and six months later, they don't remember what they learned because they're just regurgitating information. So we have to find a way when we make these upgrades to stop rushing. Everybody's in a hurry to go nowhere fast and it's showing up in schools and people are getting stressed out, blown out. 
And that it's like a it's like an invisible caffeine that we're creating under the words of being more efficient. These children, and, I, and when I say children, I'm talking about age zero to 100. They're babies. They have to be dealt, have to be given love, given the information so it can be added to their repertoire effortlessly. We have to think about meditation, how the children are being taught. Not this hurry up, hurry up, hurry up. Uh-uh. I just saw it coming. That's why I get people to slow down. And like I like I say, this idea is is it sounds kind of robotic and it's creating more stress. Hurry up, hurry up. Thank you, sir. You you are very welcome. Um you know, I I appreciate that you have that concern and it is always reasonable because we do live in a, a rushed and cluttered world. Um, but it is I, I also can back up the idea with my own teaching experience of having taught these 90 minute courses and having taught in three hour blocks. Um, one of the things I've really enjoyed about my teaching experience in Egypt is in the middle of your three hour block, the university brings a fruit plate into the class. And so we all take 10 minutes and we get something and then we have a little community and then we, you know, finish up what we're doing. So, and, and it's all considered part of your instructional time because part of the, the, problem or challenge that you really have in a three-hour class is you got to build community as well. And so that's that's one of your goals. So it's like, yeah, you're going to learn subject matter from me, but you're also going to have community. And see, I see what you're saying. That's a European idea, idea which works well, but Americans are so rushed. And so what you're saying is, I would agree with this plan if we were to introduce a way that people take breaks. People here get into these 30-minute lunches. Everything is... Ugh. Oh. And so... That's the part that I'm really emphasizing. When we do these upgrades, we have to be gentle. I do have something for you. Um, oh, Ro Reese says, uh, as someone who is always wanting to learn more and take more workshops and improve, I love the idea of learning more in chunks like this. My master's degree is full of them. Um, oh, you had your hundreds? I'm sorry, go ahead, I'll go first. I mean, I'll go after you. Oh, my God. All right. <laughs> it's all good. Um, so I think I kind of step off a little bit of something Mike referenced. Is Well, first off, is this more of like a close towards like an all or nothing idea? Um, I, I think if we made this significant of a change, it, it, it would be kind of, I mean, there would still be scheduling exceptions just like we find in anything right now. But it's more thinking about what does the master calendar look like? for your institution. And, you know, we probably, I don't know, I'd say we probably have about 2,400 sections of courses going this semester. And if, you know, if you're going to do something like this, you would plan like, oh, and this is now how we're going to schedule those 2,400, knowing that there's going to be a few exceptions in there. Yeah. I mean, um, it's also on the all or nothing piece. I mean, you can very much, you know, if there are things in this that you like, that you think we should be pursuing, say so. Um, and if there's nothing in this you like and we shouldn't be pursuing it, then, like I said, it, it goes on the shelf and we go, okay, that was interesting. Well, because partially I think the this kind of idea would, I think, work better more specifically with gen ed classes. Because mm -hmm. um, as Mike was saying, once you get into, like, higher levels or master's levels, like, that's where you're more not just trying to take a knowledge, but actually apply it and, like, build more and... Like Reese said, those kind of blocks can be really helpful. Um, sorry, that was a little bit off where I was going. I it's okay, it's not a problem. Because um, I was thinking for gen ed, being able to do those shifts, because you're also going to have more students, so having it a split option of a regular term versus mm -hmm. expedited, I think you'd have a better chance of filling those classes. Because um, I like the idea of the accessibility to multiple types of learners, mm -hmm. um, but don't necessarily want to just shift the focus to a different type of learner. Fair, totally fair. Um, and, and that's why we bring it up. Um, and, and then I would say, you know, um, I did uh, several of my graduate classes in three hour blocks that met during the summer. So, uh, you know, I mean, we, we met, you know, five times a week uh, for five weeks and uh, I don't know. I felt like I got value out of them, but I do know that. Um, and that's why I brought up the earlier uh, mention of, you know, teaching ethical and legal issues. It would not work particularly well in this sort of format. It would be okay. Um, but 
part of that, and, and I think it gets back to your earlier statement about, you know, are you taking your time and what are you doing, that that then falls to us as an institution as in, and as instructors mm-hmm. to really think about, you know, how are we delivering things and how would this change things? Because, you know, and Kenny, if you wanted to flash up that slide that just has the, the math on it with the, you know, 80, 90, whatnot, um, it, it's kind of a good example. Is It's not a huge change to think about it in terms of 80 minutes, you mm-hmm. know, instead of 75. But it is a large change in terms of what our class schedule looks like because of the time we have to allow for people to move across. And the fact that our class schedule is influenced by the two other institutions on campus is we unilaterally moving is is challenging. Um, So if I was going to make a unilateral move, I would probably want to go for the bigger splash. But yeah, I do appreciate it. Um, Can I go? Have you had any feedback on faculty workload and what would that mean? Yeah, I mean, we've actually talked to uh, the Kath Clyer, who's the AVP for Faculty Affairs, about this. And, you know, what would it mean is kind of an interesting thing, because conceivably you could set yourself up as an instructor that you're teaching for seven weeks and then off for seven weeks and then teaching for seven weeks and off for seven weeks again. Um, Or you could base your schedule looking a lot more like what the traditional workload looks like in terms of I'm here for the 16 week duration. but yeah, it is it is different teaching 180 minutes at a go than teaching 75 minutes at a go or 55 minutes at a go. I I personally I this is a very personal one. I as a like political science major, mm-hmm. I think this gives a lot more room for you yeah, like teach the theory and then do some like practice scenarios. Mm-hmm. Um, I also think this could be, and I'm sure like it could be the same for engineering as well. You guys get like the, the theory, the, I mean the theory uh, presented to you and then you get to like apply it in exercises or um, also there was like with the commu- the whole community hour idea, like I think this could be married to that in between those 90 minutes or 180 minutes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, it's, that's part of why I, I through that possible block in there of, of having an open noon to one. Yeah. Um, that is my feedback. Yeah, I think I think that's it for me. But uh, Gabe is asking how would that how would that affect our online classes or online students? Um, it, for asynchronous, it would have no impact. For synchronous, it would have an I mean, you'd be following the same schedule that people would be following for in class. So OK, yeah, thank you, Alejandro. Yeah, so, um, yeah, I, I honestly think this is a very interesting approach. I, I think it would be something that we should definitely do. Um, like how Denny mentioned, like it gives more opportunity for us to practice more and um, like whether it be like the theories or anything that we're learning, uh, like more experience and the ability to like talk with our professors if we have any questions. Um, but I was just wondering, so if we were going to do that, does that mean like the capacity for students to register for these courses? Is it going to stay the same capacity or is it going to increase or decrease? I think it would increase. I think if we did it right, it would increase because you're now looking at two sessions per semester. And so you could have a later enrollment for those seconds. That's actually why I put that little thing about late enrollment possibilities, because if let's say you were getting ready to go for this spring semester, but you're going to be taking a family trip or, you know, this is actually my best time to be working. And so January and February are not going to work for me, but I could do March and April. Is that then you're like, oh, OK, well, when's the enrollment for March start? And I'll just do it that way. So, I mean, it, it there are a lot of unknowns still and a lot of pieces to move around because others might argue, oh, no, we need just the one enrollment period and, and that's the way it's going to work. And you'll also and this is the same challenge we face right now is like you make a degree plan and it based on the assumption that you're going to get a passing grade in everything you do what do we do when you have enrolled for fall one and fall two and fall one was your prerequisite course that you were going to take in fall two and you didn't pass it and it's like oh well we've already scheduled this person for that and we've already got this seat filled with them in it and now we've lost them from that and do we have a fallback are we do we have that same course that was in fall one available in fall two so you can get that prereq done you know so yeah, there. But you know, it's the same challenge we run into if, if you fail the class in fall and you're going to take it in spring. Mm-hmm. And then uh, another faster. question that I have was: Would this increase like tuition, or, or would it stay the same? I don't see this having. I think it's tuition neutral. Okay. Yeah. I I think this would make courses way more digestible and just focus forward. And I I I like it. 
Oh, thanks. Um, so other thoughts in the room or anything? Because if not, I do have an ask for all of you. Oh, oh I, I do have to meet with the person on the student success committee. So I, I was going to do a, a, a survey and community hour, but perhaps we move. Well, what, what I was going to ask is, yeah, if, if you could take your time, get some feedback to me or some idea on sure. whether, you know, how you might want to pursue this or modify it or, you know, other thoughts you have. Maybe you come down and decide, yeah, we all courses should be 85 minutes and we need to just make everybody get on that bus. I'm very open to that. Just uh, this is a notion. It was a, a thought that was floating around there about how can we maybe better use our time. This is one way to do it. You may come up with much better ways. And so, yeah, I, okay. that's all I'd ask. It's just, you know, if you can give me feedback, and uh, I'm happy to come back and chat with you guys again at some point in the future. Okay. Yeah, we'll be happy to do that. Cool. Great. Thank you for your time. Thank you all. Coming. Awesome. Uh, do we have access to this? We do have access to this PowerPoint, correct? Awesome. Perfect. Thank you so much. Have a Thanks. good weekend. Okay, moving on to office rearranging. Um, I was wondering, and I'm just gonna do this as a like a 10 minute thing so we can uh, move. Um, oh, that's a calculator. That is not the timer. That is not. Uh, you have it? Just like a 10 minute. Yeah. So I'm thinking, thank you, Kenny. I'm thinking uh, I, I'm going to give up my office or where I do. So because elections are coming and elections are usually handled in that office. So I'm going to have to exit that. And I'm more than happy to do that. Uh, but I was wondering if we could go back to the very foundational um, text in the Constitution that, that the offices are to be open and that, of course, that would mean that I can't leave my scooter there anymore. Uh, so we can put the shelves, the shelves that we're, that we're offering for students, because I've had a question like students are a little hesitant to put their stuff in the shelves because it's not locked. So I was wondering if we could put those shelves in one of the offices and then we're thinking of like getting rid of, rid of some furniture and perhaps putting more tables and then maybe buying a couple, a couple lamps and having like a, like, like a three, like, I'm sorry. Um, yeah, I mean, we could do flowers. I, I was also thinking we could do some, like a coffee happy hour every like I don't know two days a week where we offer the students some like donuts and coffee or like something through I don't know uh, so that they know that like that space is for them. Uh, I think that would be a cool idea. But there is only two offices left, and I know you guys are occupying them. Like I again, I'm happy to exit my office, but that office is gonna be used. So it would be if you guys want, of course, like we would have to vote. But that is that is a traditional text in the Constitution, and I'm. Yeah. Uh, okay. I have you. I have Alejandro. I have Mike, and then I have Re. Huh? Okay. Re, go ahead. Okay. Um, my idea is obviously um, that front office that is now empty of people. Um, that could be a place where you know if we're gonna store other organizational things for people and they get access to the office when we're here, it's a little more security to put it in one of those offices, like you're saying, rather than out in the open. And then yeah. the out in the open space is more person friendly. I don't know, just ideas. Yeah, it, but that is not, that office is not empty anymore. John has taken over it so that he, that that's, yeah, that he's taken over that space. Um, but yeah, that, that is basically the idea I have. Can I, well, I'm going to go to Matt and then we'll go like this. Yes. Okay. Go ahead. And that other desk next to me is open. Like Gabe is here once or twice a week. Uh, so if he's not here, oh, I, you use it too. I'm sorry. And I, I'll, I'll just leave my desk. Let, let's just say that I will just leave my desk and I'm happy that that desk will be open for anybody. Yeah, I was going to say, what if since all the offices, I'm sorry, were you done?
because we can even try and maybe leave one desk in like the office that I'm currently using, take out the other two desks, and that's still a lot of. I think that knows most of the shelves that we already purchased. But we. Yeah, I mean, yeah, okay, that's a good idea. Let's keep it going we got we could, yeah, go. Um, uh, I was just gonna say, so since all the rooms do lock, why don't why don't we just use the rooms for storage so we can add more shelves in there for more space for organizations, and then obviously we'll keep the outside for everybody to use, and then we'll have like a couple computers outside, like you know, for counselors okay. and students to use. I like that. I think we would have to label each room room one, room two, room three, you know, and then the forms will be, yeah. Sorry, Re, that that. I like that idea. I perhaps we're gonna have to just like move shelves and then make sure they're labeled into something. But I I like that. Um, of course, whoever is you occupying that space has to make sure that they're responsible for like the org the org stuff that is not ours, and we have to make sure that like they're. Um, okay, I'm gonna go you, and then yeah, because we're going like this. Is that okay. Go, Mike. Um, a few things. Um, <clears throat> that office was originally built for 17 counselors. That's also the original text constitution. That's why there's so much furniture in there. Um, I think, honestly, we need to get a lot of furniture, get some less bulky desks. be lovely. <clears throat> Working on it. Yeah. Um, I like the idea of, like, keeping one, like, Matt, keeping your desk in there and then putting some shelves there. No one uses those other desks in there anyway. Um, and then, honestly, like, you're the chair of this council. I think you should have an office in there or like a meeting space. Um, I I think like that should at least be given to the chair because like you you do me a lot. You do you do the most meeting with students on here. So I think we can definitely do a reimagining that office, which includes the conference room because I think conference room is suffering from the same issue. Um, but I think under the compromise that Matt came in, like nobody needs to leave their office. Yeah, exactly. Like and that's like that's. That's more than perfect. That is more than what I was. Yeah, that, that's great. Are you? Uh, yeah, one more thing. We have a pretty sizable budget. I'm pretty sure, like, I don't know, schedule like an hour next week. We can just come up with a plan. Kind of give we this, should. This, this. How do we feel, uh, just to make sure that I'm not putting useless things in, the, in this resolution that I'm going to create, how do we feel about buying an industrial, like, larger size coffee machine Yes. so we can supply students with coffee? We have to include tea too, because there's so oh, much yeah. talk about coffee. I don't yeah. do coffee. We have tea. We have tea oh. in the office. Okay. Yeah, we have we have a lot of packages of tea. So perhaps like we're we're also gonna get like a, one of those like water heaters, you mm -hmm. know? So we have tea accessible. I agree. Uh, but I think like the large one would be the Lord, like the coffee one. So that's why I'm asking like, how would you guys feel? I'm sorry. We have. Okay. Go ahead. We have a minute. I'm gonna stop so you can speak. Oh, it's on me now? Yeah, yeah. Go inside that. Okay. I'm going to turn away my head because I'm not going to mention the name. And I'm going to talk to this council you. member. At, can you hear me? I'm going to talk to this council member after we go offline. When it comes to rearranging the office, the color students, and let me say this clear. I know this person means well, this council member. They're not coming from a place of being uh, a trip. It's just that the statement that they have made to the students of color is get out the office. What are you doing here? And I'm like, oh, no, I have to talk with them because they mean well. But the way they're addressing the students is a repelling type mentality. And I will take full responsibility by writing out some kind of sheet so that the con so that when students come, they can sit in the office and not feel like they're being put out. Because I grab students, they see me, and they're like, John, can we go in? I'm like, absolutely, baby. Let's go in here, get what you need. I'll be right back. And they don't take anything. And so we have to be careful, because I worked in corporate America, that we don't become micromanagers of supplies, that we're more concerned about providing the supplies rather than monitoring, over monitoring supplies and being disrespectful unintentionally to the other students. Okay, I did definitely told students that they had to exit the office because there was no counselor going to be in the office. And that is part of the rules of like, they were going to be alone in that office. And that is part of, that is part of like, 
the Tivoli's rules. Like those are not my rules. Um, yeah, but it's the way that you did it. That that wasn't. I know you mean well, but okay, I'll give you an example. When I went to give you like a touch a hug, you was like, I don't like to be touched. That right there, in respect to you, I already know that that's a repelling energy. You have a right to do that, but you don't know you're doing it. You're very matter of a fact. And I know that you're not being mean. I want to be clear. You just don't know that you are causing that. And it's been about several of the students. They come to me and be like, what's up with that girl up in there? And I'm like, she don't know better. I'll have a talk with her because that's happening. You're oblivious of it. Because I think if you knew, you would not be telling the students they got to get out. Rules are not as important as being respectful to the student uh, people. I I'm going to disagree. I was not disrespectful. I was like, guys, I am so sorry. I have to I have to leave the office. We have to leave the office. I have to go put up those flyers for the school. And there is like you cannot be here. Well, there is not a counselor. And and I. That is a little disrespectful Like you call me oblivious. I we're not going to talk about this. I agree. Let's talk about this offline. OK, but. Yeah, I'm just going to stop there. If you had a hand up. Uh, yeah, thank you. Um, I just also want to reiterate what Dr. Barone and what we've in the messages that we've gotten from MSC Denver about not letting people stay alone in the office. Um, and so those are like the rules that we have found, we have heard directly from MSU, you know. And so yeah, we're just following policy. Okay. We're gonna go through quorum needs. Just take over. I need to go. So, um, after having a counselor that has graduated and a counselor that has stepped down, so although we still do meet the quorum needs, um, I just wanted to bring up the the idea of voting on keeping the council as is, or if y'all are comfortable with doing re-elections to fill in the missing spots. Mike. So aren't elections in March? Aren't, yeah, um, I think it's I mean, honestly, I think it's too late. I think elections are next next week. I mean, next month. Next month. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, um, I don't think it's worth like I don't think it's worth it, especially right now. I know like a two week say we do two week interim elections might be a little rough, I think. Just bring it out there. Dr. Brown. The other thing, too, is that we're in the process of hiring an elections manager, and so we would have to have someone hired in order to even be able to conduct the elections. And so that's going to take time in and of itself for the normal election season. So, um, yeah, it kind of seems duplicative to do it twice. Just you all do what you want. But I think that's just that could. Do you know what I mean? Like, I don't know that that would be the wisest use of that person's time as we're onboarding them. Cool. Matt? I just want to state that that currently goes against our current rendition of our constitution. Um, because it references that um, in replacing a position, it would be the next Next level of votes from the last election, from what I remember. Mike. So what you're referencing is the elections code. Elections code is not in the Constitution. It's not bounding. So that's what it is, because the elections code also said the recall stuff, and that didn't happen because election, that's the technicality that makes sure that didn't happen. It's actually in our Constitution. Where? The, the elections code is in our Constitution? No, the point I just made is in our Constitution, not just the elections code. Give us one second for one minute. I can say there the reason that we're going through the Constitution now is that there are a lot of discrepancies. There's mentions of the handbook. There are things that are incorrect. 
And so what I've suggested in sending this to our advisors again is that we all, after looking through it and editing it, we all have a chance to look through it and give it a final vote as acceptance. Correcting these small things that might have gotten through, you know, by accident or, you know, because of inattention to detail. So it's not in the original text. Um, I'm looking at amendments because there was one amendment, amendment eight that was made. Should we this uh, perhaps table this for next week when we've done some research? I motion. And this is this is my. Oh, this is our. How how do you feel about tabling until next week? So we can do some research once the constitution has been set. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Well, yeah. One thing would it cause like any kind of like um issues with like work day and stuff like that if we were to bring in like the follow-up winners yeah with the counting oh, i think that's why we need to do research you mean for stipends and setting all of that up yeah, yeah. i think it depends <laughs> on if they're uh sorry i think it depends on there are a lot of nuances, like if they're a current employee, if they're not. So those are all all things we would need to like figure out. Um, so yeah, I hadn't even thought about that. Good point. Yeah, let's Mike. I may stand and correct it. What if it, this is amendment V one two three? Is it eight? That's eight. Yeah, there's a vacancy in the council. Will you, as ranked choice voting when possible, to fill a position? Election to the most recent will be retired. So, yes, Matt is correct. Just qualifying new victors will be drawn from tabulated results with the exception that no city council member may be removed. Yeah, so Matt is correct in that. We can talk about it. I'll tell you about it later. But yes, Matt, you're correct. It's the Amendment 8, Article 1. And I'm suggesting we amend that to if the council so chooses, because bringing on new people at this late date is going to be a big strain on all of us. And if you're not, you know, some members are underwater with work they have to do and trying to, to deliver and others are not. And bringing on new people that have not been part of any training processes at all don't understand how, you know, we necessarily work and then try to you know we just hope that they work in well with the group in the remaining uh, before the election next month sounds like a lot to me can i end this off i think what we need to do is this um we need to schedule a meeting re are you available like wednesday or like monday evenings by chance monday evenings yeah. i have class but monday and thursday evenings i have class other days okay. happy to meet all right, cool. Well, I'm going to send out, anyone's welcome to this, um, a invite for two things. With the Constitution, um, we're going to do a meeting in, in the conference room and talk, get this done, because if it's on the calendar, for me, it doesn't happen. Um, anyone's welcome to it um, to try to hash this out and f fix some discrepancies. And then the second meeting, question for Alex, is in regards to the office and stuff. Do you want that to be a meeting or do you want that to be in your budget committee meeting? So if we're going to do some office arranging stuff, do you want that to be in your budget committee meeting or a regular or like a, a separate meeting? Okay, so we'll schedule both those, but um, I think that'll solve a few issues. So. Hi, I um I didn't get to give advisor updates oh, today. <laughs> Please do. Yeah, we did because Dr. Sean Schaefer came in. Yeah. So, um, and the only reason, well, I'm bringing it up because I think it's relevant and important to this topic. Um, Armando and I are going to read through the feedback that you all give for that con those constitution um, amendments. And um, he is going to set up an electronic voting process um, to be able to approve those 
whatever it is that you all decide in terms of your recommendations to try to clean the Constitution up. And so um, instead of going through it like in one of your live meetings, you know, line by line, um, wanting to do that through an electronic process. And so just know that we want to get that going. Um, so likely next week, like we're going to be sending out information about what the process is going to look like, the logistics of that and how you will go through that process. But we really want to clean that stuff up in the next couple of weeks. I forgot what the timeline is that he shared with you all, but um, that that is our goal. And so just know that that's an additional important priority that I think we've been talking about since the fall, that we really want to make sure that we are tightening that up as we are going into the election season, and that includes the election code. So just want to want to put that out there because there are a lot of inconsistencies. And I hope my advice or recommendation would be that you all spend your time and energy on the foundational documents and the, your grounding documents to get those up to par for the new council coming in, as opposed to thinking about integrating new people in and the time and the energy that it's going to take to do that is, I don't know, that's just my thoughts, but you all do as you see fit. Thank you, Dr. Brown. Anybody else have anything to say on this topic? Any more, please? <laughs> oh, I know. One more update. Um, so just so you all know, Denny didn't talk about this earlier, but we are, well, not we, Denny is presenting to the Student Affairs Board on Monday. Um, and we are just finalizing that presentation. Thank you to Alejandro and Mike and anyone who contributed to revising the presentation, but um, that will be on Monday afternoon. Um, so just so you all know that um, Denny will be presenting the entire thing. And so her and I have been connecting on that and just um, feeling pretty good about it. But there was a significant, well, it, there's an increase ask. So I don't know if anybody wanted to talk about that. It might be a good idea just to share high level highlights about what you all are asking for in that budget for next year. Yes, and um, it's funny. This is actually um, less than we asked last year. We asked for a complete double of our budget last year. Um, uh, yeah, so this is technically a little bit less, but what we're asking SAB is to give us the funds for a director. I think it'd be like an assistant director who is just solely over student governments. Um, someone who's like, that's their job is to manage student government and can help us out. Because I think that guidance, I think that like, that would help a lot of issues, I feel like. Um, I love our advisors currently, but they're very stretched thin. I'd say you guys are kind of very stretched thin. Um, and and I think that's, I think someone who's like, I think the best way to start off is someone who's completely like, that's their job is to make sure we don't burn down halfway through the year and maybe fix some internal issues, so. This is my thought. That's the reason. That's the only thing that's really changed from last year. And it's like we we'll must likely get this either this approved or disapproved, but we'll probably get the same budget as we did last year. Maybe a little bit more because enrollment's up. So sweet. Okay. Anything else? Okay. I motion we adjourn. we adjourn this meeting. I second. Okay. Everybody who agrees, say aye. 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 aye.